Now, in terms of all of the vectors that I've just got here, a, negative a, and p, how would I, um, how would I get to, um, uh, not, oh yeah, how would I get from a to p? Which vectors would I string together? Have a think about it. Um, uh, negative a and p, or the negative of a. Yep, yeah, fantastic, because if I'm starting from a, right, I go, I want to get to p, but the way I would do it is via m, wouldn't it, right? So like you said, I've gone in the opposite direction to a, which like you said is negative a, and then you just add on p, right? So let's write that. We do the opposite direction to a, and then we add on p. Fantastic, okay? Now the next one I've got is from b to p, and that's actually very easy to do because I already know the right direction to go in, right? Yep. If I start from here, I'm going to go towards M, which is what vector? Yep. Uh, uh, a. Yeah, it's, it's negative of negative A, right? Which is just A. And then I add on P. Now, the reason why I care about AP and BP, let's just sort of highlight those. Um, here's AP, which I'm going to put in orange, and then um, let's do BP up here in green. What's the relationship between AP and BP again? Uh, right, they're, they're actually, like what I started with was, what's given is that there's 90 degrees there, yeah? Oh yeah, the 90 degrees feature, that's right. Yeah, so I would say, hey, um, AP and BP are right angled to each other. Now think, yeah. think, think. This part's hard and I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to ask you to do it, right? Think in vectors. What is the special thing that you know if two vectors are orthogonal to each other? What's the knowledge? You've got to call back a couple of weeks, actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, There's a particular operation that we can do with two vectors. What is it? Uh, is it the, um, uh, the product rule? Yeah, 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 it's the product. Hold on, product rule is something we think of from calculus. There's a particular kind of product we introduced. Uh, the the What's the notation? It's a... Dot. It's a dot, right? So it's, it's the dot product. So dot. what we know, very good by the way, you got there, and there was no one else in the class so you really had to lift, right? Is that when two vectors are at right angles, when they're orthogonal or perpendicular, then when you take their dot product, you get a dot product of what again? Of one. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, it's zero. It's zero, it's zero. Because the dot product, if you think back, the dot product is how are these vectors working together with each other, yeah. right? If they're like pushing against each other, you get a negative dot product. If they're going in the same direction, you get a positive dot product. But when they're perpendicular, they're not working with or against each other. They're just kind of like off in random, yeah. you know, independent directions. So that's why it's yeah. zero. Okay. Yeah. Now here's the thing. I actually know what AP and BP are. We just stated them up above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, uh, what's AP? Well, it's... Um, it's, I'll write it in an in a easier order. It's P take away A. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And then what was the BP vector again? Um, P plus A. Yeah, very good. P plus A. So I've got those. When you do the dot product between them, you get zero. Okay. Now, at this point here, I don't know about you. I looked at this and I was like, oh, what do I... What do I do with this? Now, I'm not going to work it all through. I'm going to show it to you very quickly, but I'm not going to write it out, and I'm not going to ask you to write it out because it's very laborious, but you can look back at the recording if you're curious about this, right? One of the reasons why we call the dot product uh, like a product, just like normal multiplication, is that just like in numbers, the dot product is what we call distributive. Um, now that's a really weird word, but all it means is, is when, you, when you've got something like a binomial like this, right? If I gave you, um, you know, uh, sorry, let me choose better um, letters. X plus one, X plus three, right? If I gave you that as a product, you know you can distribute the X to the terms on the other side, and then you would distribute the one to the terms on the other side, right? Like you've done this like literally thousands of times, right? Now the same is actually true in the dot product, right? What you will get is I can distribute P to everything in the second pair of brackets. So let's actually write this now, down now. I could go P dot P, and then when you distribute it again, it's, um, it's P dot A. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And then can you help me distribute the next one? What am I gonna get here? Uh, 
negative a. Yep, I'll, I'll just write it as a minus out the front. So, yep, yep a right. yeah. dot p. And then, what's the last one? Um, uh, minus a dot a. Very good. Now, just this is the part that I'm not going to ask you to write down, but I'm just going to quickly, um, I'll put an asterisk here. I'm just going to quickly show you that this, this is actually true because it feels a bit rad, rabbit out of a hat. You're like, do I believe that? I don't know. We hardly do this kind of thing. Yeah. So I've, um, <laughs> here's one I prepared earlier, and you'll see why I'm not getting you to write it down. This is the distributive property of the dot product. It's not hard. It's just a lot of writing. So you can see I'm, I'm imagining these three-dimensional vectors here. Um, we'll keep going if that's okay. I know that was the bell. And if I if I imagine, just let's do the arithmetic, right? It just ends up. This is me doing the dot product, and this is, um, you know, the x's multiplied by each other. Here are the y's multiplied by each other, and here are the z's multiplied by each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now I know this looks weird. I've written this out in four lines just to make something very obvious, right? So can you see I've gone a times l, a times o. That's these two lines. Then I've gone D times L, D times O, so that's these two lines. I've done it in four lines because when you have a look, just look at this blue line, the top one here, right? This is X's multiplied by X's, Y's multiplied by Y's, and Z's multiplied by Z's. Do you see that? So it's a dot product between ABC and LMN. And it just goes, like each of the rows, blue, pink, green, and orange, is just a new dot product. But when you combine them together, what you get is the distributive property, right? Now, like I said, I don't expect you to um, look at this now and say like, oh, of course, right? Um, this took me a long time to sort of write and think out, but I just want you to not just believe me, like, hey, the dot product works like this. I want you to know it can be proven and it's quite easy, it just is a lot of writing. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's come back to here and let's actually finish this out because this is, this is the fun part, okay? So pick up your pen again, have a look on the left-hand yeah. side here. There's some things that just cancel, right? What, what cancels? Yeah, the p dot a and a dot p. Very good, because the dot product is not just distributive, it's also commutative, because it's just multiplication, right? So these terms here, they just cancel, right? Yeah. So what I end up with is, on the left-hand side, I have p dot p, yeah. and then if I add that minus vector there, right, that negative vector, I've got a dot a yeah. on the right-hand side. Okay, yeah. now... <laughs> this part is so so strange. Do you remember what happens when you do a vector and you dot product against itself? Do you remember that? Oh. Like if I, let's actually write this out. Um, if I've got a vector and I dot product it against itself, what do you get? Like just multiply yeah, across. All, all the terms are squared. That's right, all the terms are squared. Now what this really is, is just, this is the square of the magnitude. Do you recognize that? Like, if I took the magnitude, there's Pythagoras, and then I've just yeah, squared yeah, it. Right. Right? So what I've got, yeah, very good. What I've got is the magnitude of P, but yeah. squared, that's the yeah. same as the magnitude of A, but yeah. squared, right? Um, but hold on, these are all squared. These are really just distances, right? So I can just say the magnitude of P is the same as the magnitude of A. Yep. Yeah. Now, go back to our diagram. Let me zoom out and let's have a look at our diagram. Where are P and A? Have a look here, right? Yeah. What you've just told me, what we've just proved, is that the magnitude of P is the same as the magnitude of A. Yeah. But, but the magnitude of A is the same as the magnitude of negative A over yeah. here. Do you see that? Yeah. So what we're saying is, hey, look, A and B... Oh, wow. and P, Yeah, do you see it? Yes, it's like, oh... They're, they're all points on the circumference, but there's this one magical point in the middle of the circle that's the same distance from these three points on the circumference. There's only one point in the middle of the circle that does that. What point is that? Uh, the of it's the center of the circle. So I can say, um, therefore, MP equals MA, which equals MB, i.e., M is the center of the circle, and um, that's the same really as saying that AB is the diameter. I, I don't even need to really say that because it's, it's, it's sort of done, right? And, and so what we've done is, like, we've pulled the dot product out, which is a very unexpected thing, and used some of our, our vector arithmetic and vector thinking to construct this proof. Um, on my channel, I've got some videos that prove this with 
you know, deductive geometry. I've got ones that prove with coordinate geometry, but I actually think this vector proof is one of my favorites because it uses um, some really clever thinking and results. And you saw it, you had the, oh, I get it now, right? Um, that moment is really satisfying.